Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you guys are having a great day. I've mentioned that I've been using the Magewell Pro Capture HDMI 4K Plus in my last FFmpeg video. While at first I thought the card may have been broken, I found all of my issues with the fault of other hardware and software. Really, by the end, I found it to be an awesome card, and a card I will talk highly of in future videos. I'll eventually cover all the ups and downs of the card in its own review, but I wanted to cover its most fatal flaw and a possible fix in its own video. While the card is very powerful and very capable, it has one major problem noise. This card is extremely loud, and not just because of normal fan noise. It produces a high-pitched hiss that is hard to get past in a normally quiet environment, and even in a somewhat noisy environment. You can see this issue reflected in reviews of this card just about anywhere that allows people to write reviews. Now, am I saying this totally invalidates the card? No. But it's highly annoying, especially for me. As some of you guys know, I went ahead and did a full room water cooling project to reduce both heat and noise in my room. If you haven't seen that video, you can watch it here. It did reduce both heat and noise in my room as I wanted, but unfortunately in terms of noise, it also revealed all the more annoying noises in my room. I found that the noise coming from this capture card became much worse as it used to be at least mostly masked by the other fans in my computers. I didn't really see a way around it though as the cooler is obviously proprietary and you can't just strap any old fan onto the card. After just ignoring it for a while, I noticed my mic was picking it up in my videos which is pretty crazy considering this is a very dynamic mic. I was able to remove most of it with software but you can still hear it under my voice if you really listen. It was also annoying when doing just about anything else in this room for obvious reasons. So I began to think, maybe there's a way for me to just strap a CPU water block to this thing and hook it up to my full room loop. I made a mock-up of what I wanted to do in Photoshop and asked for some advice on the Linus Tech Tips forums. I didn't get as much interest and advice as I had hoped, but I got a little bit. Even though I didn't really get the answers I was looking for, I decided, what the heck, let's just do it. Worst case scenario, I'm out $900, which is actually a pretty bad scenario. The main idea was use one of the fancy new graphite thermal pads everyone has been talking about. Watch Linus's video about it here. Long story short, they perform pretty admirably compared to thermal paste and can be reused and contain no liquid. They are electrically conductive though, so you need to make sure that you cut it to the right size, because if it's hanging over the board, it could fry something. In addition to the graphite pad, I bought some electrically non-conductive thermal pads to cover anything up if I needed to. Got them in varying thickness in case some of the chips were raised higher or lower than others that needed to be covered. And of course, I bought this CPU water block. Seemed like I could get the mounting to work somewhat with this one, and it was extremely cheap. While waiting for the parts to arrive, I went ahead and emailed Magewell support to see if they'd send me a photo of the card without the cooler on it, and to my surprise, they did. I continued to ask if the four memory chips and the main processor were the only chips being cooled by the existing fan and heatsink, and they confirmed that that was the case. I took their photo and threw it in Photoshop, got the length of the card from their spec sheet on their website, and used some Photoshop magic to determine how large I would really need the CPU cooler to be to cover everything. And as it turned out, I needed almost exactly two inches to get the job done, which is actually the exact size of the CPU water block's copper base that I bought earlier. I really lucked out here. Moral of the story is just buy the parts before measuring anything because it's going to work out perfectly in the end anyways. I mean, I really should have pulled the card out of my computer and took the cooler off, but I was a bit afraid I wouldn't be able to get it back on and didn't want my recording PC to be down for too long. It's really the key to making all of my videos. Anyway, at this point, I had all the parts I thought I needed, and assuming my Photoshop measurements were right, everything should go together pretty well. Before switching to the video of me actually putting everything together, let me apologize for the difference in lighting and jumpy shots. I had some family over and a lot of other things were going on, just wanted to get this video done as quickly as possible before something went wrong, which resulted in some pretty lackluster recordings, but I think it should get the point across. I started by turning off both my PCs, powering down the full room loop, disconnecting the recording PC from all its cables and the loop itself to move it into a different room. Next step was to drain the loop so I could introduce the new water block and resequence some of the tubing. After removing the card, I began to disassemble its cooler. Best way I found to do this was just pinch these clips on the back with some tweezers. After successfully removing the cooler, I began to examine the bear card and the cooler itself. I noticed, as I should have before, that the cooler was full metal, so I shouldn't have to cover the board with those pads I bought earlier to protect it from shorting out. Putting the water block over the chips should be no different. The chip was quite a bit smaller than the graphite pad I ordered, so I needed to cut that down a bit to get it to fit just right. As I mentioned before, I don't want this thing hanging over the main chip at all as it's electrically conductive. 
After cutting the graphite pad to the right size, I set the water block on top of the card to see if it was in fact a perfect fit. And just as measured in Photoshop, it seemed to be. So I began to mark where to cut some of the metal off of the water block so it wouldn't protrude past the PCIe connection. Then I flipped the card over and used a drill bit to mark the metal wings on the water block through the holes in the back of the capture card so I would know where to drill some of the new holes. Looking back at the photo I put on the Linus Tech Tips forum kind of makes me laugh now. Wasn't going to need those mounting hole extenders like I thought I would. This was going to work much, much better than I originally imagined. I decided to start with drilling the holes just to make sure that when I cut the wings back a bit, I didn't cut them back too far. Now this is a pretty expensive table, so if you want to drill on top of something like this, you're going to need a spacer. I went with using my main PC's motherboard box. If you do this, make sure you don't pull anything out of it so the next time you need something from it, it's already broken. Pfft, who needs SLI bridges anyways? After drilling all four holes, I found they didn't line up very well. Not sure how I screwed that up, but I was going to need to enlarge some of the holes. This didn't ruin anything in the end, but it definitely would have been worth my time to take a much longer marking where I needed to drill later, as mounting the cooler would have been much more solid. I proceeded to saw the excess metal off the mounting wings on the water block, but quickly found that clipping them off was going to be much quicker and realistic. I ended up ruining this pair of clippers as they weren't really meant for this, but oh well, they were pretty old anyways. I decided I was just going to reuse the thermal pad that was already on the memory chips as it should be measured to the right thickness to keep everything flat. The graphite pad was very close to the same thickness as the pad that was covering the main processor chip before. Went ahead and cleaned the chips with some rubbing alcohol, filed down some of the rough edges on the cooler, and went to mount everything together. I should mention that my original plan was to use the mounting screws that came with the water block, but they were just too thick to get through the holes on the back of the capture card. I brought the card with me to Home Depot and found an M3 bolt was the best fit. Unfortunately, they didn't have one long enough, nor did they have nuts of the right size. After calling around, I found that Ace Hardware had exactly what I was looking for. I ended up buying eight M3 bolts, two sets of four at different lengths as I wasn't exactly sure how long they would need to be, eight plastic washers, eight metal washers, and eight nuts. Yes, a bit overkill, but better safe than sorry. I ended up using all eight nuts, but that's because I was trying to make the bolts shorter, so a better solution would be getting the right length in the first place. I also used all eight washers because the springs that came with the water block were meant for much bigger bolts. So I just sandwiched the spring between two metal washers, one to keep it from popping past the head of the bolt, and one to make things nice and smooth right up against the wings of the cooler. I ended up only using four of the plastic washers, but did have to cut one of them down really thin to fit between the chips on this hole of the card. So in the end, I would recommend getting four M3 bolts, 18 millimeters in length, four M3 nuts, eight metal washers, and four plastic washers in terms of hardware if you wanted to try this yourself. And if you decided to get a different water block, you would also need to buy some of your own springs if it doesn't come with any. I went ahead and got everything mounted. Flipping the card over without the screws falling out is actually much more difficult than it sounds, but eventually I got it to work, and then I went on to examine my job. When looking very closely under good lighting, I could see that the water block wasn't making perfect contact across the main processing chip. This was kind of strange, as I mentioned before, the old cooler was also just a flat piece of metal like the water block, and the graphite thermal pad I was using was basically the same thickness as the old pad they were using on the same chip. Additionally, I reused the thermal pad on the memory chips, so theoretically, everything should have worked out perfectly. Tightening the cooler further down didn't really help either, as it mostly just pulled the ends of the card up, bending the center, and just making things worse. The part of the chip that wasn't being perfectly covered was the side closest to the memory chips. So I thought maybe if I used a slightly thinner pad on the memory chips, the water block would tilt down enough to make better connection with the main chip. Luckily, I bought two different sizes from Amazon, if you can remember, and the one millimeter thick pad seemed to be slightly thinner than the pad that came pre-installed on the capture card. If I had to guess, I would say that the original pad was about 1.25 millimeters in thickness. Rather than struggling to flip the card over with the screws falling out like before, I found probably the best use for my high school diploma since I got it. Once I got everything together, I could see that the water block was making much better contact with the main chip all around, but still not perfect contact, which was really weird. The same side of the chip that was the main problem before was still making the least contact, even with the water block literally tilted down towards it. It's almost like the main chip tapers off from the center, as in the corners of the chip are at a lower point than that of the middle. But at this point, I would say it was making pretty good contact, 
about 90% of the chip was covered and probably higher, so I thought it would be fine. Really, my biggest worry now was that the water block wasn't making as good of contact as it was before with the pads on the memory chips. But I've also noticed that the water blocks on my GPUs don't make the best contact with the memory chips either, so I'm fairly certain this should be fine. But don't quote me on that. Also, just to quickly mention, I stuffed a little piece of thermal pad between this bolt and this resistor here, or at least I think it's a resistor, but bottom line, I just put it in between the bolt and whatever this is to make sure I wasn't going to fry anything. Don't know if I needed to do that, but that's just what I decided to do. Now that the card was completely assembled, it was time to put it back in the PC and introduce it to the water loop. However, I quickly found that the card with the fittings attached was so close to the base of the case that the tubes were kinking instantly. At this point, my only option was to order some right angle adapters online. At first, I went with these ones. They were brass, not aluminum, which wouldn't corrode in my loop, and they were black, which would match all the other fittings. Got them ordered with two day shipping, so I would get them on Thursday, but the next day I received an email informing me that they would be greatly delayed as they didn't actually have them in house. I contacted support to make sure this was true, got them canceled, got a full refund, including shipping and support actually gave me a $5 credit on my Amazon account, which is pretty nice. But sadly, by the time this all went down, I couldn't get them ordered with one day shipping again to receive them on the same day. After searching around, I found these ones. They were also black and had prime shipping, so I could get them as early as Friday, but ended up going with the gold ones as they were a bit cheaper and gold fittings actually sounded pretty cool. Depending on how these ones looked, maybe I would do my entire next build like this. Plus, they were going in my recording PC, which you can't see inside of, so looks weren't really that important. Not to mention that rather than getting two fittings, I was getting four this time around. So if any of them sprang a leak, I would have another one on hand to replace it. No need to order more and wait even longer. Longer. Somehow, in the chaos of my extended family being over and other poor conditions, I lost the clip of me actually attaching these to the card, so sorry about that. I installed the card back into the PC to make sure the fittings would fit, and they did. Now I just needed to introduce the block to the existing water loop. These fittings, along with most other 90 degree fittings, I would assume, have rotary function. So you can turn the fitting without loosening or tightening them. When I was ordering them, I was a little worried that they wouldn't be facing the right way. Not sure why I didn't think this was a thing, but alas, it was. With the tubing done, I went ahead and connected this pump I used to bleed individual systems, as seen in the full room water cooling video, to the quick disconnect fittings in the back of the computer. Filled the loop, tilted the computer around, added some biocide to fight algae growth, and bled the loop some more while watching for leaks. Admittedly, I didn't test for leaks or bleed the loop for as long as I should, but I was fairly confident in the job as 80% of this loop had already been running for months. The pumps hooked up to my main loop are much powerful anyways and would bleed the system much faster. Disconnected the pump, put the case back together, and moved the system back into my room, connecting all the cables and the tubing. I then proceeded to power up my main loop again, and everything seemed to be going great. Crossed my fingers and went to check temps. To my genuine pessimistic surprise, they were quite a bit lower than they were before. Now, I wasn't surprised that a water block hooked up to an overkill water cooling system outperformed an air cooler with a tiny fan on it, but I was a bit surprised that the whole thing actually worked, especially since the water block wasn't making perfect contact with the main processing chip, but maybe the original cooler wasn't either. They were both just flat pieces of metal after all. Now are these immediate temps a perfect indicator that this will work long term? No, but it is a great indicator that it will. I will routinely update a pinned comment in the comment section down below, letting you guys know if this is still working, in case someone else out there wants to give this a try, but first wants to make sure it's a good long-term solution. To further test temperatures, I started to mine Bitcoin on both my PCs, which is the best process I've found to really heat up all my components at once. And the capture card topped out at a cool 62.6 degrees. This is around 19 degrees cooler than it ran on the fan, or at least that's my highest recorded temperature, when it was still being cooled by the fan. I must say, I'm a bit surprised that this doesn't run much cooler water cooled than it did air cooled with that tiny fan. My theory is that the water block isn't making quite as good contact with the chips as the air cooler was, but since it's so much more efficient, it's still outperforming the air cooler. But I don't know, maybe I would be getting much better results with thermal paste or even liquid metal if I was that hardcore, but the graphite pad really seemed like the one for this job. I mean, not to downplay a 20 degree reduction in temperature. That's pretty good. And it should theoretically increase the lifespan of this card. Now back to the reason I did all of this in the first place, the noise. 
and I'm happy to report, as you would imagine, it's completely gone. No more annoying hiss, my room is much quieter. Now with a slight and as far as I know unfixable white noise emitting from my studio monitors, my room is extremely quiet. And truly, the white noise coming from the speakers is very quiet. I don't think most other people would even notice. I might put some sound dampening foam up around the room to get the noise down just that much more, but really, at this point, I'll be making a very small gains in that department. And that concludes this experiment. I would label it as a big success. If you own this capture card, are you going to try this? Have any critiques on how I accomplish this? If you have any other questions or comments, as always, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.